Hello, I'm Ken Burrell and this is Scary Scars Shared. In these interviews, I ask real project managers to share in around 10 minutes what they learned from their most challenging project management experiences. If you're new here, you might want to consider subscribing to the video channel or the podcast. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Ben Archer, who's going to share some of his experiences with us. Ben, I'd like you to start by introducing yourself and giving us a flavour of your background and how you got into project management. So, uh, I have been in retail all my working life, uh, which is actually 21 years. Uh, that's across store and cluster management uh, and also visual merchandising as well. So, I was uh, lucky enough to be the flagship VM manager, an area visual ma manager and also brand visual manager for one of their brands as well. Mm -hmm. so, Varying kind of different roles uh, across, across the retail side, so it gave, gave me a very good good grounding across the whole of retail. So I fell into project management uh, through initially doing my visual roles, so two of the visual roles. One of them, um, so the area visual manager, um, the particular uh, brand that I was working for at the time, uh, expanded. They took over another retailer that had gone into administration, uh, and there was a, 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 a tranche of 20 stores that we opened uh, very quickly. Uh, and I, I did the first one uh, and then was deemed a bit of a specialist and was literally overseeing and helped to oversee between the construction and, and visual, that kind of uh, gateway between the two. Uh, and then one of my other roles, I moved across to um, flagship um, store in Oxford Circus. Uh, and that particular menswear brand had increased, uh, its, or was going to increase uh, its space by doubling, so it's going from one floor to two floors. Uh, and the women's wear was also having a modernization process as well. So I was brought in specifically to oversee that project. Uh, I've been a project manager now for eight, eight years. Um, uh, I've been in my current role for just under a year. Uh, again, working for another fashion uh, retailer, mm -hmm. uh, working on their um, new space project in terms of uh, delivering their space strategy uh, and a new fit for purpose office space. Uh, both in their head office and in their customer care centre. So thinking back over your project management career, can you tell us about um, an example of a scar, so something that went wrong on a project that you were managing and how you got round it? Uh, it was a modernisation process, basically doubling in size, taking the next door unit, circa 50,000 square foot. Uh, it's obviously a trade and store, so it still needs a trade in the existing space, and then we obviously we marry the new and the old. Right. The way it was designed uh, by, by directors, they, they wanted to keep continuous trade. So we only had like a one week close down period, which is more about just uh, bringing in new fixtures and stuff like that to then, to then reopen it. So first thing we done, we sat down and talked about how we were gonna phase it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we looked at it and the most obvious way to do it was building the new space. Uh, and then you, you take it into four chunks of that, how you marry the old and the new and how you can maintain trading. So we, we as a, a, a project team were very comfortable in what, what that would be. We then sat down and went through with senior directors to, to get their buy and sign off. Uh, unfortunately, all they could see was about you lose X space means we will lose X sales. We need, need to do it in six chunks rather than four chunks. Right. Um, and we still have to deliver it on the same time frame to the same cost. Right. So it was kind of, as, as we used to say in that company, a JFDI. Yes. So we worked, we worked through it and we got to a stage where, yes, this is doable. And yes, it's going to be a challenge. And we, it's one of those ones where you need all your ducks in a row. And it, it, it kind of didn't leave much room wiggle room should we say so yes. if there's any errors or anything that's come up on site we, we, we had no contingency in terms of time uh, and that kind of how it played out I think for the first two to three phases it was plain sailing as much as it gets uh, everything was kind of going hunky dory uh, but then cracks did start to appear and as you would get in any any construction uh, works in terms of design coordination on site conditions structural as well so the two sites were never supposed to be one site so cross bracing had to be reviewed and webbing and all that sort of stuff as we kind of usually do in terms of not mm -hmm. food looking at it and sitting down with a team we were probably about two two weeks behind right um so as you would usually do go go back to quest of additional time uh unfortunately in terms of where it landed it was in line with um thanksgiving and black friday so it's a key trading period so no you get it open and see how what acceleration of time acceleration of what what just get it open yep. so, uh, and, and we got open right? we, by hook or by crook it, it was open but the morning we were opening until six six red cranes outside the front of the in the shopping center putting up the shop front and then still had to clean it still then had to get the vm team or creative team where they then say ben ben i need to get in the window can i adjust the window so it we were literally still painting the store up until it was 
it was open. It was, wow. it was kind of that, that last Close minute. Close to the wire. Yeah, absolutely. So we, again, we got there, right? So it was done. So from a director's thing, well done, you've done a great job. But as always, it was just the, the sheer, what it took out of me and everyone else to kind of get yeah. there. The pure resources, the amount of, from a, a operational perspective, we just had to flood it. Other, other stores were robbed of managers, area managers, everyone just had to come in to get it done. Ooh, and it, to the and, and it, as always, out of adversity comes triumph and it was like, great, and everyone pulled and worked together. But then we had to all lay in a dark room for two or three weeks just to, to kind of get over it. So is it your feeling that um, by accelerating the project, you actually wiped out the uh, the gain that w- oh, from from the sales? At one cent, and yeah. more, and more. So we ended up spending a lot more. That's that's. The so it was it was a false economy yeah, to and, do it that way. A massive false economy. Yeah, yeah. and, and like I said my my biggest regret with that was not pushing back. And when I did try to do that, I kind of got shot down a little bit. And then, like I said, the the, the JFDI came came into it as we said. So thinking back over that experience, what would you recommend to other people that they should do to avoid getting themselves into a situation like that? To take hold of management, do not be scared to push back on, on mm-hmm. your directors and your senior management. I think that's very, very key. Uh, and, and explain that in a succinct way uh, through commercials in terms of numbers and times and stuff like that. Yep. Don't overpromise. don't overstretch yourself. I think that's again the biggest, biggest thing I was saying is about me trying to deliver or, or show off or, or say yes to that director, yes I can do that for you. I think sometimes it's better to be open and honest and say look I can do this but this is what I can do and for X, Y and Z. So don't overstretch yourself. Um, the only one, that the phasing, and that's the one thing I, I will take to my grave is any phasing you take as much physical space as you phys- physically can because the more you take the less you cost, the less your resource, the less you double In one doing. chunk? In one chunk. Right. Yeah, take as much as you physically make the can fa- give. Make the area of a phase large. That's as, big as, you, as big as you can give up. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Isn't it, sometimes it'll be, oh, well, about this, about that. If you can give it up, give it up because mm. it will save you time, it will save you, it will save you money. Because like. some of the work that you do is per phase, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Per phase. So and the more phases, the more work. Yeah, exactly. Mm. There's, there's that side to it. We're also talking about low cost modernization of an office at the minute as well. So we're looking at doing that in chunks, but also again, also trying to say let's do it as big a chunks as possible to make sure we can do it in a most cost effective and efficient way. Ben, thanks for your time, your openness and your insights. So today we've heard from Ben about how he recovered from a challenging project management experience and what he learned from it. What can you learn from this? What will you do differently in your projects as a result of Ben's experience? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this interview, let me know by leaving a comment or a like or both or by sharing it with others on social media. If enough people think these interviews are worthwhile, I'll make more of them. If you want to share your scars in one, let me know. If you're new here, you might want to consider subscribing to the video channel or podcast. For other interviews on project management topics, take a look at my video channel. For articles on project management and PMO topics, visit my website pragmaticpmo.com or follow me on Twitter at pragmaticpmo. To connect with me more personally, search LinkedIn for Ken Burrell Pragmatic PMO. In the meantime, until the next time, thanks for listening.